For the last few years, for all my YouTube videos, I've been using Caden Live to do my video editing. It's free, it's open source, and it works really good. I love it. The only thing I find that it's missing is a good GPU rendering option. Basically, all the rendering is done by the CPU. Now, I originally had a second gen i7 laptop, and a 10 minute video would take about two hours to render. So, I finally upgraded, you'll see in a couple videos before this, to uh, a 7th gen i7. And now that same 10 minute video only takes about 40 to 45 minutes to render using the CPU. Now, there's also another option that you can use nowadays called NVIDIA NVEC. And it's been available for a little while, actually since about 2012, but it hasn't quite been fully integrated into everything. And I've tried it, and now my same render times go from about 40 minutes down to 10 or 12. So it's been around since 2012, and it hasn't been fully integrated. It's the one thing that Caden Life does not have put into it for I have no clue what reason. But there's a hard way of doing that, and that would be installing Caden Live on your Linux box and having to then recompile MLT, MEL, um, FFmpeg, which is what they use for the rendering, and actually add in the NVEC support for it. Or there's an easy way to do it. And if we look on the screen here, we switch on over, and here's Shotcut. Shotcut is another Linux video editor, which also uses the MLT, MELT, FFmpeg suite, but it already has the NVEC support enabled into it. So we're going to grab it from that. So the first thing you're going to do is go onto their website here. And for me, you get the 64-bit Linux portable zip file. And I'm also running Linux Mint 18.3 on here. So once you download it, you go to your downloads. And here it is, Shotcut Linux X64. You double click on it and you get an archive manager. And it starts out with the folder Shotcut. Now you're just gonna grab this folder and drag it out to your home folder. Right here. Inside that, you have the actual Shotcut Start app. We're not actually going to use their video editing software. We just want to use the FFmpeg, which is actually found under here, Shotcut.app. And the actual binary files are in here. But you're going to actually link to his little scripts that he has for him. This way it actually fully works. So, hey, we even got one of my old test videos in here. We don't need that. <clears throat> so we're going to link to these in Caden Live. So now let's jump over to that. Now this will work also for a regular install or an app image. I prefer to use the app image myself because it's newer. And for some reason it will not hold the breeze dark and I prefer the breeze dark. It works a lot better for my eyes, especially for showing on YouTube here. So. The only thing, now that we have Shotcut installed in there, the only thing you need to do is go into your settings, go to Configure Caden Live, go down to your environment variables, and right here, your MLT environment, you need to change these to point to those correct folders that we just went to, the Shotcut backslash Shotcut.app backslash FFmpeg, FFplay, FFprobe, and your profiles will also go there as well too. See, let's see here. Yep, see? Your home folder, which in my case would be Rec, Shotcut, Shotcut.app, and not the bin, we're not in the bin section. Uh, there's your FFmpeg, FFplay, uh, your melt file, and that's basically it. So take this screen right here, pause this video right here, and copy this information into your Caden Live installation. Again, this will work for the app image or also for a regular uh, install into your Linux. Okay, so once you got that done and taken care of, you're going to get out of this. I'll cancel out of it, but you'll apply and okay. Then we're going to go to our render profiles. Now, see, I've already created the second one here. All you have to do is click on the MP4 uh, render profile here, and you want to create a new profile. 
and it will open up and you're going to crap that's not what I want to hit <laughs> your speed options you want to get rid of you don't even need them all just blank it out and your profile name uh, I put down the NVEC underscore H264 and your extension of course is still MP4 now you're going to shorten I will copy this whole line out and put it back in there into your installation it works beautifully basically we've changed the V codec to NVEC H264 and we've also added in quality the R value I forgot what they stand for preset slow and I forget what this stands for too I went through for about a week playing with this and these seem to be the best settings so I will copy this whole line right here and just make yourself a new profile and now I'm going to show you we're going to make a quick little clip and we're going to render it through the CPU and then we'll render it through the GPU and show you the difference. Okay, so first let's add like one or two quick clips that I can play with here. Uh, let's get out of my there videos. Test, yeah, that's all the test stuff I did. Uh, let's do the high temp mat. I just put this video out last week. So let's just grab two clips. Yes, adjust for correct. There we go. Cut that clip. Get rid of the excess. Okay, so now we have a two minute total clip that we can mess with. So let's go ahead and render it. First, let's do it with the regular MP4 version. And I think I should make a new place for this. And yeah, we'll leave them in the documents for the time being here. Create a new folder. Uh, YouTube. Good enough for now. And we'll make it uh, x264 underscore render. Save it. Uh, more options. I usually always go for high quality. Force it to progressive. I have my eight threads. And that's basically all I do. So now let's render to a file. This is going to use the CPU and we'll see how long it takes. And at the same time while that's rendering, I'm also going to open up my system monitor and my NVIDIA X server so this way I can pull this on over here and we can see now this is a quad core 7th gen i7 so there are eight logical cores you can see all eight cores are completely peaked out at 100% it's doing it to the CPU now down here there is no video engine utilization whatsoever so that's what's going to change when we go to the GPU. Da, da, da. There we go. So for a two minute video using this uh, 7th gen i7-7700 uh, mobile laptop version, um, five minutes and 23 seconds to render that on regular CPU. So now you can see here's my CPUs dropping down. They're still kind of busy because again, we're recording the screen. But now let's switch over to GPU recording. So let's go back here and change this title to NVEC. And we're gonna switch over to the NVEC record. Now see, the quality went and disappeared because we don't have those extra settings put in there. It's automatically set to slow. And you can see it dumped everything in there that we need. I force progressive and let's just render. We're good. And pull up the other two screens again. See here, now we got video engine utilization. We are actually working here. So there we go. That was a big speed increase right there from five minutes and 23 seconds on the CPU rendering to two minutes and 46 seconds on the hardware rendering. Now, before I show you a side-by-side -side comparison on the screen for it, I want to do this test one more time but I want to do it without my screen recording software running because I think that might be bottlenecking it a little bit. And then I'll come on back. I will show you the results on time again. And from there, we will go and actually show you the rendered video side by side on each other. Okay, so I just finished running those exact same renders, one CPU, one GPU, without having the screen cap software running. And my suspicions were correct. The screen cap software is getting in the way. 
as you see, the original X264, right up here, or the first one, hit 5 minutes and 23 seconds. Well, the one without having the screen cap running did it in 2 minutes and 37 seconds. Now here's where it gets even better. The NVEC with the, with the uh, screen cap running, 2 minutes 46 seconds. Without the screen cap running, 1 minute 9 seconds. Not bad. It's basically rendering double the speed, because remember, this was a 2 minute clip. So, I did take a few screen caps just to show you what I was talking about here where if, with the video engine utilization. So, let's go back in here, pictures, and I took a bunch of screen caps here. Let's see here. And of course, I took my second screen as well, too. Uh, can we get bigger here? Now, this is... This is with the X264 rendering, no screen cap, and you can see still no video engine utilization, and it was using all the CPU. So let's continue onward. There we go, they changed things here. Okay, that's still that one. Okay, this is the beginning of the other one here. So let's zoom in here. Actually, let's go to the next one. The next one looks even better. Oh, one more. There we go. See, I get up to now 40% video engine utilization. Using the GPU it goes a lot faster, and you can see the CPU is no longer taxed. This right here is the tail end from doing the no GPU rendering, and I immediately restarted and continued onward with the GPU processing. You can see the CPU is not being massively taxed, especially since the screen cap software was not running at that current time. And this is what it normally looks like. It's using a ton of GPU, and it finishes it in over less than half the time. So, comes out great. So, here the, here's the renders side by side for you. Yeah, it was still liquid. Get off! There we go. Ah! <laughs> that was hot. <laughs> yeah, didn't do anything to it, really. I mean, you go with paper, and it's like... Mm, yeah, you're going to start etching paper. And nothing here. So there is a side-by-side -side comparison for you between CPU and GPU rendering. Honestly, I really don't see a difference. If it is, it's extremely subtle. Unfortunately for me, I can't use it that often because there's one thing you can't do with NVEC, and that is rotate your video 180 degrees. I do a lot of top-down shooting on my desk, so I have to rotate my videos 180 degrees in post-processing. Unfortunately, NVEC doesn't support that. So even if I try rendering under the NVEC profile that we made in Caden Live, it will, as soon as it gets to a rotated video, it will jump down to the CPU. Now, of course, if the next clip is normal, it will go back to the GPU and keep on accelerating. But hopefully some of you could take advantage of this. So go ahead and leave any questions or comments down below. Thumbs up, please, and I'll see you next video.